The Houston Rockets are probably one of the most promising young teams in the entire NBA right now. And I'm talking about having young players like Jalen Green, Amon Thompson, and just getting Reed Shepard. This team is looking absolutely scary. Thanks to BetUS for sponsoring today's video. And in today's video, we'll be looking at the young talent of the Houston Rockets and really breaking down whether or not they have a chance to really squeeze into the playoffs this season. We're going to be looking at stats that you guys probably have never seen before. So this is going to help a lot of other people out. And make sure you stick till the end of the video because there's a stat that really surprised me. And well, to start off today's video, let's talk about Reed Shepard. This dude absolutely dominated the summer league and a lot of people were questioning why he went so high and well after summer league there were no questions anymore i think out of everyone in this entire draft he has the highest potential to become a star in this league i'm really not that high on everyone else in this draft alex Sar, i wasn't really high on but i really think reed shepherd should have went first in the draft after what he just did in the summer league, this dude averaged 20 points per game on 5 assists and 5 rebounds per game. But his efficiency was even better because he shot 50% from the field. What I noticed about Reed Shepard's game is that his game is very mature. He plays with a lot of pick and rolls and he plays the game at his own pace. Kind of similar to Luka Doncic. You will not speed him up and you will not make him play any faster than he's playing right now. But do you guys actually want to know how good Reed Shepard is at shooting the three-pointer? Well, let's break down every single three-point shot that he had with Kentucky. On catch-and-shoot three-pointers, he shot 51.4%. On unguarded threes, he shot 57.4%. And on guarded three-pointers, he shot 46% and nailed shots in the faces of defenders. Shooting 50% from the three is something that I have really never seen before. And just watching Reed Shepard play, his form is very consistent. And I really think that he could implement this in the Rockets squad. The Rockets need a lot of shooting, spacing out the floor for Jalen Green to go and operate. But I was scrolling through BetUS and I looked at the odds of a player winning the Rookie of the Year. And while Reed Shepard has plus 650 odds to win this Rookie of the Year. And I'm pretty confident he can do it. So it's not really that bad of a bet. But make sure you guys gamble responsibly. And if you want to, BetUS is offering a 125% bonus on your first three deposits deposits up to $2,000. So if you want to check that out, link in my description. And now let's talk about Amin Thompson and Fred Van Vliet. These two players are kind of similar when it comes to the defensive end. They are both what we like to call chasers. And what chasers do is literally chase everyone around the court, go through off ball screens, and eventually lock down every single player. And well, when it comes to the top five chasers in the entire NBA, Amen Thompson is first, and Fred Van Vliet is a healthy second place behind Amen. But another thing that makes Amen Thompson so dangerous is his ability to grab offensive rebounds and get you put back bucket. And well, last season, he had a 11.3 offensive rebound rate, which ranked him first in the entire NBA among non-centers. This dude is an absolute monster when it comes to snagging rebounds. And even when it comes to deflections, his hands are always active. That's why he always creates some transition buckets for his teammates. And out of the top 10 forwards in deflections, Amen Thompson ranks second in the entire NBA. Last season, Amen began playmaking as well. He was setting screens for players, rolling, and sort of playing like a dream on green. If he can improve that three-point shot a little bit more, he will have much more room in the paint to operate and get his buckets. And well, now let's look at Jalen Green, one of my favorite players on this Rockets team. He struggled a little bit in the starting years, but now he is on a tear. And especially at the end of last season, he helped carry the Rockets to a 10 plus win streak. And the way he did this was literally running at the rim and dunking it on everyone. And well, if you don't believe me, when we look at the top 10 third year players when it comes to transition shooting, Jalen Green is first. This is ahead of players like Scotty Barnes, Franz Wagner, Jalen Suggs, Cade Cunningham, a lot of talented players in the league. But one thing that Jalen Green really improved on last season was his playmaking talent. And this was really impressive as he is technically considered an off-ball player. Once you get better at playmaking as an off-ball player, you impact the squad tremendously. 
And when looking at the top 10 off-ball players and playmaking talent, Jalen Green is first in the entire NBA. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. And the strides he's making on the playmaking side of the core is what's going to help the Rockets really continue this crazy win streak that they had near the end of the season. And something else that happened during the season for the Rockets was the unfortunate injury to Alperin Sangoon. We all know what Sangoon is capable of, going out there scoring 25 points, dishing out assists, but the thing is, can both Sangoon and Jalen Green work well together? Because when Sangoon went down, that's when Jalen Green started playing better. That's really the question going into next season. It's not if Sangoon is good enough to become a superstar. He clearly is good enough, but can both Jalen Green and Sangoon work well to the point where this team becomes a very strong contender in the playoffs? And while if you want to be a contender in the playoffs, you need strong defensive players and you also need players that get into the minds of the other players. And this is where Dylan Brooks comes to play. When we look at Brooks' season with the Memphis Grizzlies, he was a decent three-point shooter, but he shot 33% from the three. But with the Houston Rockets, he really cemented himself as a 3 and D player. And at one point in the season, he was shooting 57% from the three-point line. And while the Rockets have been helping the three-point percentages of every player on the squad, and they have all increased in their three-point shooting, and it's all because of a man named Ben Sullivan that helps out people on the roster and is really good when it comes to player development. This Rockets team is also very deep when you look at their bench and all these other players like Jabari Smith Jr. that is going to be a nice spot-up three-point shooter. You also have Tari Eason, which is a lockdown coming off the bench. Even the addition of AJ Griffin, which was very underrated. They snagged him from the Hawks. He's another good 3 and D shooter. And Cam Whitmore, who is a slasher coming off the bench. This team is absolutely scary. And I know this sounds crazy to say, but I really think that the Rockets have a chance to make the playoffs with this roster. It's just perfectly constructed. And they also added Steven Adams, who is going to come out there and serve as a backup center to really give you grit and strength when it comes to playing on the court. But in the comment section, I want you guys to predict where the Houston Rockets will rank in the Western Conference. And who is the first option for the Houston Rockets? Is it Alperin Sangoon or is it Jalen Green? This is something I want to know from you guys. But if you enjoyed today's video, you could do me a favor, hit that like and hit that subscribe. It'll help me out tremendously. Thank you guys for watching today's video. And also thank you to BetUS Sportsbook and Casino for sponsoring today's video. I will catch you guys in the next banger.